Well, ladies and gentlemen, before we can wrap off the Crash Bandicoot series, it's finally time to sit down and take a look at the last Crash Bandicoot game that Naughty Dog ever made, Crash Team Racing. Crash Team Racing is a game that what many people consider to be the best Crash game in the series. And I know for a lot of people it's either Crash 2 or Crash 3, but for me, it's Crash Bandicoot Team Racing. Out of every Mario Kart clone, this game is probably the best. In fact, this game doesn't even feel like Mario Kart. It feels like I'm actually playing a Crash Bandicoot game. The story is... The story is kind of weak. There's an alien named Oxide who wants to turn the Earth into a giant parking lot unless you challenge him to a race. Yeah, I ain't too big of the plot. Yeah, it doesn't feel that good. Though, to be fair, it's the last Crash game. You know what? Plot doesn't matter. Now let's actually take a look at the game. The racing in this game is pretty standard. You pick your character that you want to play as, you race on a course, and you must finish the game in first place. Now, I noticed that the carts don't actually control like the ones in Mario Kart. For example, in this game, you have a little speed boost. If you hold the R1 button while turning left and right, you'll start drifting. You see this little bar on the bottom right of the screen, and when it turns red, press the L1 button, and it will give you a boost. You can do this up to three times during a drift, and you can do it as many times as you want by simply just jumping and then doing it and then doing it again and then doing it again. I think you know what I mean. And of course, just like Mario Kart, this game gives you a wide variety of characters that you recognize from the previous Crash games. Beginning of the game, you start off with eight characters, but as you progress to the story mode, you can actually unlock more by doing special challenges. There's four boss races in this game that you can unlock. There's Ripperoo, there's Papu Papu, there's the... Can't remember his name? And Pinstripe. They can all be unlocked with special challenges that you must complete in the game. In Adventure Mode, unlike most of the hub worlds in other games, you actually get to drive around the hub world and going to the next area to race. This is actually really different, because it allows you to practice your racing skills and get you ready for the race that you must embark on next. This is a very, very unique idea. I don't think many other kart races have really done this. Here's how the adventure goes. In each area, you have four different racetracks to race on. If you can collect at least four trophies in each area, you'll be able to race a boss. If you beat the boss, they'll give you a key and you can get access to the next area. These racetracks in adventure mode also allow you two extra challenges, time trial mode and the CTR mode. CTR mode has three letters in the Crash Team Racing logo, C, T, and R. If you can collect three of these letters in one race and also finish in first place, then you'll get a CTR token. There's also relics that you can unlock as well. If you go back into the racetrack, you can also do a time trial mode. You must beat the clock and also unbreak these boxes if you're going to get that relic. I have to say, the relics in this game are actually really, really good. Some of the relic challenges in Crash 3 were pretty tedious, but here they felt really, really great. None of them felt out of place, and I did have a lot of fun trying to do these time trials. And of course, once you've got every four keys, you can race against Oxide yourself. Though let me say to you right now, it's actually a pretty hard race. Though to be fair, it does offer a pretty entertaining ending. Okay, so that's the adventure out of the way. Now let's actually talk about the other modes that you can do. This game also has arcade mode, in which you can race on cups and race against the CPU. And then there's multiplayer. Oh my god, I love the multiplayer. You ever heard of a multi-tap? Yeah, you use it for four controllers. So if you ask me, it looks a little bit like a boomerang. Has anyone actually tried to throw this as a boomerang? I hope you didn't get injured for that. There's three multiplayer modes you can try in the game. There's still arcade mode, but you can only race against one person and at least other CPUs. But of course, there's also versus mode, where you can actually have four players racing, but unfortunately removes the CPU entirely. Oh, and then there's the battle arenas. I love the battle arenas. They're big, they're wide, and you get to use a lot of weapons on each other to just say, I hate you so much, take that, boom, it's so much fun. Speaking of items, that's another thing this game does really well. 
The items do feel a bit similar to Mario Kart, but you know what? I really don't care. They're still the items I love using, and you know what? Out of every racing game that year, I think this game excels upon the rest of them. It had fantastic music, it had fantastic arenas, it had fantastic racetracks, it had perfect time trials, perfect CTR matches, the greatest roster of characters in a Crash game. Honestly, I could go on and on and on about Crash Team Racing. It is by far one of the best racing games that I have ever, ever played. Also, do I think this game is better than Mario Kart 64? Mmm, yes. Yes, I do. Crash Team Racing just did so much for me. It's much more memorable, and I didn't play Mario Kart 64 until sometime in 2010, so you can't really argue with me on that. As for Diddy Kong Racing, not yet. I haven't even played this game yet, and I'm not sure if I will, though it does look pretty interesting, though I don't know if it'll be as good as this awesome game. Oh, it's so good. I have to give Crash Team Racing a 9 out of 10. I was so close to giving this game a perfect score of 10, but because there's only a few minor problems with this game, that really does push it backwards. But honestly, all I can say is, if you've got enough money on your hands and you're at a store and they have a bunch of PS1 games, and you see a copy of Crash Team Racing on the shelves, get it. Trust me, it's worth it. So, that about wraps it up for Crash Bandicoot. Okay, I know what you're probably thinking. What about Crash Bash? Don't worry, I will review Crash Bash when I get around to it, but as for right now, I just wanted to focus on doing the Naughty Dog games. Don't worry, I will review Crash Bash when I get around to it, and I'll also review other games like Wrath of Cortex and Crash to Insanity. Trust me, you won't believe how many hours I've spent playing Crash to Insanity, but I won't reveal too much of that. All I can say is thank you so much for watching this Crash Bandicoot marathon of games, and I hope you have a good day.